Hi girls, welcome to lesson one of biomechanics in sport. This is the unit that we're going to be covering over the next half term. Um, things that are included in the unit are Newton's laws of motion, force, centre of mass, levers and analysis of sport through the use of technology. So this lesson is all about Newton's laws and by the end of, of the video hopefully you'll be able to tell me what the three Newton's laws of motion are, um, being able to define them and also being able to apply them to sporting situations. Newton's laws help give us an understanding of why objects or humans um, react in the way they do to forces and this can help us with our technical analysis of different skills um, and movements in sport. So let's get started. The first law of motion is the law of inertia. So this law states that a body will continue in a state of rest or uniform velocity unless it is acted upon by an external force. Now, this law is used when there is no net force applied to an object. What net force means is um, net force is the result of all the different forces acting on it. So if they are all balanced, then there is no net force. And therefore, um, it, you know, it doesn't mean that there is no force acting on that object. It just means that they are cancelling each other out. And when this happens, the object will remain stationary or will move at a constant speed in the same direction. And it won't change that speed or direction or it won't start moving until another force or a change of size of force acts upon that object. So for example, a sprinter, when they're in their full stride, they have four forces acting upon them, um, but those four forces cancel each other out exactly, and therefore the, the sprinter will travel at a constant speed. So you can see from the diagram, the four forces are air resistance, weight, friction, and reaction force. And all of these forces cancel each other out, and therefore the sprinter travels at a constant speed. If one of these forces were to change size, for example, um, the ground reaction force, so the, so the force that the foot is pushing off of the ground, starts to decrease, then that will cause a change in the sprinter's speed. So, I'm going to let you pause the video here. I would like you to consider the law of motion and see if you can come up with some of your own sporting examples where you can apply this law of motion. Okay, so some of the sporting examples that, that I've come up with are a basketball will stay in your hands until it is thrown, um, a hockey ball will remain still until it is hit by a stick, a football will roll until it's slowed by friction or stopped by another player, um, a shot put will not fall from the air after it's been thrown without the application of gravity. So you can see here, um, just to reiterate that if there is no force on the object then there is no movement okay however once a force is applied then we have movement and the, the force can be applied as a push or a pull and a push or a pull can alter a body or an object in the following ways it can cause a body to move um, as seen previously it can cause a body to accelerate or speed up. It can cause a body to decelerate or slow down. Um, it can cause something to change direction or it can cause them to change shape. So you can see here, this for an example, a sailboat. Once wind um, gets behind the sail, then it will cause the, the sailboat to accelerate. And the same situation applies if the wind um, comes from a different direction, it will then cause that sailboat to decelerate. The sailboat will remain going at the same speed until that force hits it. Um, causing you know, a body to change direction, we've got a tennis as a prime example. The ball will keep going in the same direction until the racket hits it and changes the direction changing shape so a golf ball once it is hit the impact of, of the um, of the club head will actually cause the golf ball to distort slightly before it moves 
the ball shape will be compressed by the force of the club head on the impact. Okay, so the second law of motion is the law of acceleration. So we've got first law is the law of inertia, second law is law of acceleration. So this states that when a force acts on an object, the rate of change of momentum experienced by the object is proportional to the size of the force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts. So this happens when there is a net force, so the, the forces applied to the object are not balanced. And a net force forwards will produce acceleration, and a net force backwards will produce deceleration. Um, a net force sideways will produce a change of direction, and obviously the bigger the force applied, the bigger the acceleration. So, for example, the sprinter slows down at the end of the race, um, there's a net force backwards, so less ground reaction force, and the sprinter will decelerate. Okay, and here you can see the diagram, so see the arrows, they're balanced, but however, these two um, arrows are not balanced, and therefore the sprinter will decelerate. Okay, so again, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and have a think of if you can come up with some of your own sporting examples of when a force acts on an object, the motion experienced by the object is proportional to the size of the force and in the direction it's, it's applied. Okay, so some of the sporting examples I've come up with. Um, so if you obviously kick a football hard, it will go a long way. Large force, you know, further distance. If you kick a football softly, it won't go very far. Um, if you hit a hockey ball to the left, the ball will travel to the left. And if you hit a hockey ball to the right, it will go right. It's, qu it's quite straightforward. And so we come to the third law of motion. So Newton's third law of motion is um, that the, mo the law of action and reaction. So for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So this law is used when two bodies exert forces on one another. Um, action and reaction are equal and they are always opposite in direction. So the action of a jumper, like a high jumper, down on the ground will result in a reaction of the ground up on the jumper. This reaction, so the, the jumper pushing really hard down on the ground, will cause the ground to push up on the jumper and the upward force on the jumper is the force that actually allows the jumper to take off. So here you can see a diagram. So you've got the reaction force up on the jumper in red and the black arrow is the jumper pushing down on the ground and that's what allows the jumper to take off from the ground. So again, can you pause the video and see if you can come up with some of your own sporting examples. Okay, so some of the examples I've come up with. So if a rugby player will push to the left with their foot then they will swerve to the right because remember it's always opposite. If a high jumper needs to push down on the ground um, to be able to take off, we have already looked at that sporting example. And then in football, a goalkeeper needs to push to the left with their feet in order to dive to the right to save a shot. So here you can see the example of a footballer. So you've got the action force, the foot is pushing down um, towards the right and therefore the, the, the goalkeeper is moving towards the left there. So you can see, okay, the reaction force is goalkeeper lifting into the air, the action force is goalkeeper pushing down onto the floor in order to, to move. So there are three other YouTube videos I would like you to take a look at. These help just go back over, over the Newton's laws and we'll explain them in different ways which may help you. Once you've watched these videos, I would like you then to use all of the information you've got from this video to complete Worksheet 1, Newton's Laws, which has been put on Go for Schools. And then um, once you've completed that, you can come back and watch my second video on biomechanics.